Group A? Yeah. All right. Um, Qatar, 0-2 versus Ecuador to open the tourney. Senegal, 0-2 to Netherlands. Qatar again, 1-3 to Senegal. The uh, hosts are now out because of Netherlands, 1-1 to Ecuador. Only, I, I talked a lot. I'll let you go first. Talking about your most impressive team. Uh, easy. Ecuador. This team has been so fun to watch, and they have played so well, and they deserve every bit to get out of this group, uh, even though that's not a guarantee at the moment. But, yeah, they have looked they, – they've just been so fun to watch. Um, you look at the team on paper, there's no Mbappe, there's no Messi, there's no Ronaldo on this team. There's one man who I'm going to talk about later, standout player, hint, hint. Um, and – he, you know, name-wise, he's not nearly at that level. So, you know, the thing that makes this team so great is their cohesiveness and the way that they play like a team. Um, and I, one of the things I added to my notes, on paper, not nearly as talented as Netherlands. Netherlands have so many massive names on the club scale that you, if you look at it just on uh, ahead of time, like on paper, you should be like, ah, oh, Netherlands should just walk this game. But Ecuador just plays so well in their system and as a team, chemistry-wise, and they've they've looked every bit a team that should be coming out of this group um, and competitive even in the knockout rounds. So easily for me, the most impressive team in this group. Yeah, I agree. Um, certain people who know ball really well knew that they would tie Netherlands one one. I won't name them per se, but it's one of these two people in the chat and. Not you. It's Grace. <laughs> Correct. Grace Grace heard us talking. She got up. She's like, what? <laughs> we both had them at the bottom. We thought they were just a bit outside the level. Um, they went in. They beat the host. They Granted, the I, I want to jump in on there. Granted, that was when Sadio Mane was still not hurt. Correct. By the way, a side note, I'm really upset because when I saw Sadio Mane was out, I dropped Senegal, but I believed in the corruption. And I put Qatar at second. I'm so tight. <laughs> this time was probably gonna go through. I went literally, it was 10 minutes before everything locked up. I was so tight when I saw them lose. I was like, ah. Anyways, um they went in, they beat the host, they beat the corruption of whatever the heck that offside call was. Still don't believe it's true. Um they get that much needed draw against the Netherlands to put them in a great spot to move on. Um they're in the mix, man. They need one more good result against uh a Senegal team that they can they can they can play with. You you talked about it. They um they have one guy, really. They've got other players who are at a, at a good level, but they got one guy who's carrying them right now, and it's based off of a system where they're playing really good counterattacking football. They're getting they're getting stuck in. They're winning the ball in dangerous areas, countering quickly with numbers, and they're getting chances. And those chances are being tucked away. Um. Yeah, they, they can play. They're in a really good position. I I am pulling for them now to get through. I would love to see them get through. So, um, talk to me about your least impressive team. Oh, Qatar, man. I mean, yep. this is not the same team that we saw be competitive in Asia and be so competitive in the Gold Cup. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the pressure. I don't know what it is, but they just do not look like the same team. I get that on paper, this is probably how things should look for them, considering that they just, you know, they don't have any notable players on their team. But this team was playing so much better than they've been playing at this World Cup. And this was a group for them that they could have got out of. And they got handed an even bigger chance at that when Senegal lost Sadio Mane. I mean, this, they, they should have been much more competitive in this group. And despite that, fact they were the first team knocked out of the world uh, out of uh the group stages so easily for me they've been the least impressive you, you could say it right they're the first team knocked out of their own world cup that's how you want to phrase that it's terrible it's terrible 100 percent. after a really good gold cup in 21 and a, a, re, a winning the asian cup in 2019 i had high expectations i thought they were going to be legit um so naturally, because I thought they'd be good, they came in and they flopped. Because that's how <laughs> that's how this world works. Um, 
zero shots on target against Ecuador, only three against Senegal. Um, they look like they've never played soccer before half the time that they have the ball in their back line. I mean, the goalkeeper errors, the missed clearances, it, it looks it looks semi-professional. It looks like I'm watching a, U, a USL2 game. It's an embarrassment. That's what it is. The, the hosts have been embarrassed on their home soil. They stopped playing for five years. The players in this team were selected five years ago to train every day with each other, day in and day out, to be prepared for this World Cup to get bounced by game two. Embarrassing. There's yeah. nothing else to say except embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. All right. Let's talk about our standout player. I say our because if you have anybody else, you're wrong. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, I went with the guy that has scored every single goal for Ecuador in the last two World Cups combined. Uh, that man <laughs> would be Enter Valencia, who I think is everybody's pick for top player um, out of this group. I think it's probably one of the most obvious decisions. He's got, I think, three goals right now so far. Is that right? He does. Yes, he does. Three goals so far. Um just to add a little bit more details to what I said before, last World Cup that Ecuador was in, which was 2014, they scored three goals. Guess who scored all three goals? Enter Valencia. Guess who scored all three goals for them so far this World Cup? Enter Valencia. Um, at this rate, he's going to score every World Cup goal for Ecuador for the rest of eternity. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's been unquestionably the best player for them. I mean, they, they don't get me wrong. They've had plenty of other players who have been playing well as uh, but the guy that's scoring every single one of your goals, yeah, he's easily the standout player for me. Here is the issue, though. His tournament may be over. You see that injury that he got? I did not. What happened? He was carried off on a stretcher. That would be uh, looking up here. The update says... Uh, there is no there is no update. Yeah, I don't see anything. So hopefully that's no news is hopefully good news. Media reports suggest that he should be fit <laughs> to play against Senegal on Tuesday, where all they would need is a point to move on. So that's looking better. But yeah, he was carried off on a stretcher with you know his hands over his face, really, really upset. Um, which is not a good look. For, as you said, there has been one goal scorer in eight years for this team at a World Cup. And that is him. He is him. Um, if he cannot play, you will see this team struggle. And I genuinely, genuinely believe it will be a 5-5-0 formation. And they will say, break me down, I dare you. And they're just going to try and get a point and get out. Go play anti-football. It'll be great. <laughs> Yeah, it, it? I, I just saw a video of him casually walking around after the game. So okay, I, I think he's going to be okay. That's great. That's great. That's great. 